Hello, Matt here. Welcome to WanderingUpward.org, Pollinating Sustainability. I'm going to show you guys the clothes that I brought with me for my bicycle tour. And uh, I'll go through it piece by piece, kind of start at the bottom. These uh, socks, I originally bought two pairs of very expensive merino wool socks uh, that are supposed to be very antimicrobial and moisture wicking, but I lost both pairs before I was two days into the trip. So I ended up with a regular pair of, uh, two pairs of cotton socks, and they're not desirable, they don't dry quickly, and they, uh, they hold sweat, so I don't recommend them. I would definitely say get, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say get the merino socks because they're very expensive, but definitely get just some moisture wicking socks from, from Sports Authority. Um, I also have uh, a long pair of, of wool socks. These are merino wool socks also. Um, those would be for when it gets, starts to get cooler. Um, footwear. I have a pair of boots because I'm going to be working at different farms and locations for hiking also and everything like that. And a pair of, of slides. These are Sanook slides and they've been serving me well. They're very comfortable. And I actually ride the bicycle uh, whenever it's not too cold, I ride barefooted. And look at the video on the rig, and I'll show you uh, how I do that um, without hurting my feet on the pedals. Um, next thing is pants. These are a pair of pants that are long pants that I cut off. I've had these since high school. Uh, they're 100% nylon. I recommend the, the nylon outer layers because it dries very quickly and it doesn't hold smell. Uh, I also have a pair of nylon what are called convertible pants, and I got these from Sports Authority. Um, they have their own their own belt built into them. That's not necessary, but it just happens to be like that. And the the pant legs zip off of them, so it's it's not cold yet. So the pant legs get stuffed in the bottom of the bag, and I'll I'll use them whenever I need them. They're they're very light. Uh, also, I brought two pairs. Accidentally brought two pairs of basketball shorts. I uh, meant to only bring one. I didn't realize I'd already packed a pair when I packed the second pair. And, but they've been serving me well, so I recommend the basketball shorts. They're, they're pretty great. I don't use any kind of padded pants or padded underwear. Um, I've been doing fine without it so far. Of course, I've only gone about 150 miles, so I'll have to update you on, on exactly how that works. Um, next, underwear. This is my undies. And these are merino wool. Uh, you would think merino, like you'd think wool would be a bad material for, for underwear, but you can look at the material. Um, it's hard to see, but it's pretty, it's pretty thin. And it feels a lot like cotton. It's actually thinner than a pair of cotton underwear. It's very moisture wicking, antimicrobial, so it doesn't, it doesn't hold uh, uh, bacteria or smell. So I recommend the, the wool underwear. But I also have these pair of, uh, they're just spandex and nylon moisture wicking underwear that you get from Sports Authority. I got these at Ross. They were, actually they have tons of them at Ross, uh, different different types. And I think they were $4 or something for that pair. So actually I would recommend those over the Merino because the Merino is I think close to $18 a pair. And the shirts, I have this shirt which is 100% nylon. Uh, I've had it for a while, it was just something I had in my closet, and very moisture wicking, very quick drying. Uh, that's something you want to you want to make sure to, to keep in mind. Everything you buy needs to be quick drying, because you have very short supply of clothing, so you need to wash your clothes every day and hang it on the back of the bike to dry while you're riding the next day. So if it, if it doesn't dry, you're, um, you're going to end up with wet clothes or wearing the same thing twice. Uh, and then also have the, the shirt that I'm wearing right now, which is uh, polyester. I think it's 80 something percent polyester and the rest is spandex. So also very, very moisture wicking. Uh, this is a, it's a long sleeve t-shirt. I got it at a, at a thrift store. It's practically brand new. I think I paid $4 for it. Um, I figure I'll, I'll need a, uh, a cotton t-shirt or I'll like that, that comfort at some point when it starts getting cooler. Um, cold weather stuff. I have this, this mask. This is also 100% polyester. Uh, it feels like a fleece type material. So that would be for when it gets cooler. Um, also have these, these in, uh, inside gloves, inner layer gloves that uh, you can get them at any, any Walmart. They're cheap, I think probably like a dollar or two. And 
somebody gave me these headbands. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to need them. And this, so I bought a merino wool sweatshirt on eBay that was like $3, an old sweatshirt that somebody had. And it was too small for me. So I brought it to the tailor and had him cut the arms off and put some elastic around it. And they're, those are going to be arm warmers. And then I had him use the body of the sweater to make leg warmers. Uh, and that cost me, I think it cost me $15, but I think it would have been $25. She made some errors and lost it a couple times and then forgot to do it. And it ended up being like a two-week ordeal. And she felt bad, so she charged me less. But that costs about $25. You can buy leg warmers, arm warmers, but for a set, you're probably going to pay around $50. And if you're looking at merino wool, you're probably going to pay $35 or $40 a piece. So that's, that's an option. Um, next, I'm, I'm bring, I brought two pairs of, of thermals, or no, uh, one pair of thermals, the top and the bottom. Um, I have those already. Uh, I've already used them a couple times, even here in Florida. And the rating on a sleeping bag, if you buy a sleeping bag that's rated down to 20 degrees, they rate it assuming that you're wearing full thermals too. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're looking at sleeping bag ratings. Uh, this is this is my childhood blankie, and I brought this as a scarf. So I figure uh, I was looking for some kind of scarf thing to keep my neck warm, and I figured this will both keep me safe and it will also keep me snuggly, and it will also keep me warm. So that uh, that's that. Don't make fun of me. This uh, this is the towel that I'm using. And it's just a, a large hand towel. Um, you don't need a full body towel to, to dry off. And you could also substitute this for a, um, what do they call the, the ShamWow type of thing. A, uh, I can't think of the name right now. But the squeegee material that the ShamWow guy uh, has that infomercial about. You can use one of those because you can wring it out and it practically dries it completely instantly and you can use it over and over. I've used one for traveling before, but they, they cost a little bit of money and I just, I had that on hand and I was leaving and, and that's what I brought with me. Um, and last few things, uh, this is a rain gear, frog togs. I got it on Amazon, probably, I don't know, $12. I don't really remember. It was very cheap. Um, I haven't used it yet, so I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I got a hat. This hat I found at Goodwill. It has no, no top on it, so I can put my bicycle helmet on top of it. And the straps go right through here, and, and it protects my neck and my face. It's been great. I'm going to be sad when it, when it breaks. Um, also, a pair of sunglasses. I bought a pair of sunglasses, and I lost them. Uh, about a day after I got them, but then I found these on the side of the road, and they're all right. So have yourself a pair of sunglasses. This, for cold weather, this is a, a, a down jacket that folds into its own pocket. Also, you can use it as a pillow, so that is definitely great. Multi-purpose, and having a pillow on the road is quite a luxury that is not worth uh, the space to pack alone by itself. But you're packing a jacket anyway, get a down jacket that folds into its own pocket, use it as a pillow. Um, gloves, the outer gloves, these are, these are a pair of mittens, and most of the gloves that I'm looking at were very expensive, and these mittens, they are a, uh, army surplus, like a Russian army surplus mitten, and I think I paid $12 or something for them. They're super warm, um, I, I can shift the gears in the bike with them, they're also good as a, uh, an oven glove for, for handling my, my hot pan whenever I'm cooking. And, safety vest. Make sure to wear a safety vest. Makes you feel better while you're on the road. And the last thing is uh, belts. I brought two belts, and the only reason I did is because these belts are, they were great as straps. So if you get this type of belt, you can use it as a strap and also as a belt. So highly recommend these guys. And that's about it. So good luck. We're at the, the end of the time for the video, so that's perfect. Uh, Happy travels. I'll fill you in as I go on, on if any of this stuff stops working or if I recommend something else, I'll, I'll put it in writing most likely on the blog. So until then, I'll see you in the future.